Oh, Double Jam coming in with the fire already. Love it. Good evening and welcome everyone to another evening of NGS Season 12. My name is Isex and tonight I am bringing you a Division D Northeast matchup between Council of War and Council of Mages. I mean, it's the Battle of the Councils tonight. I had to absolutely bring this one to everybody for their viewing pleasure. Get to see who's going to be top dog in the Battle of the Two Councils going on here. Welcome all who have not been here before and are following. Dovetail, thank you so much for the follow before the stream kicked off. Hope you're going to enjoy yourself on this channel. Lots of Heroes of the Storm action coming your way on this channel. Going to have a lot of fun here. These two teams are ready to rock and roll. They're getting the final steps in through the lobby. So I want to make sure I send us over the map overview so you can kind of see what was going on here in the pregame shenanigans getting ready for this match. Council of Mages, they ended up winning the coin toss. They wanted to go for map pick over first hero pick, meaning they started us off with our bands. Council of Mages went ahead and banned out Cursed Hollow and banned out Alteric Pass, getting rid of some of the very Big global macro heavy maps. Meanwhile, Council of War came in. They banned out Dragonshire and Infernal Shrines, which to me are kind of more of the classic Heroes of the Storm maps. So kind of each team taking out a couple maps here and there. And the first map we are going to go to, picked by Council of Mages, is going to be Towers of Doom. I believe this is my third series in a row that we are starting on Towers of Doom, which is always fun for me starting on a map like Towers of Doom because it can get absolutely crazy going down to the wire with these kinds of maps you know this map does not have any direct core damage so really it's just about team fighting and ultimately getting those sweet tower shots and taking your opponent down but if they are still alive with that one hp left on the core they can still come back and end up turning this thing around and getting ready both these teams have given me the ready in the chat so we should be getting this thing started here very quickly you know i was browsing quickly the standings before we got going here in this match council of mages they're sitting up i believe in the number two slot right now they're the number two seed coming in to this series meanwhile council of war they are currently where were they sitting at they're there oh nope this is yeah, this is D Northeast. Where are they? Oh, they're at the number seven spot. There they are. That's another seven spot currently. So still in the playoff contention right now, but needing a few more points, you know, to get themselves up a couple more spots in the playoff rankings. No better team than to go against against than Council of Mages. Actually, if these two teams, if this was playoffs, these two teams would be heading off right now. The number two team would go up against the number seven seed. So we could see some playoff implications for sure. A little bit of shakeup. Council of Mages, if they win here, they're going to bump up into that number one seed over Brickhouse currently. Meanwhile, Council of War, if they can get even two points here, they won't have enough to bump up into that sixth spot, but they will definitely make up some ground in getting there. And it is a very, very, very tight race between that number one and six. So once they get to that area, they can jump a couple of rankings just with one or two points after that. So looking to catch up to the rest of the pack, but still in the hunt for the playoffs. Both these teams, or at least Council of War, waiting their dear sweet time, gonna ban out Lucio as their first ban, focusing on the support pool to start off. And usually we see on Towers of Doom, a lot of focus to the offlaners and a lot of take it, uh, so, uh, uh, attention to the support pools as well. Because of the ability for the supports to have so much crowd control utility on a map where there's this heavy team fighting kind of, um, you know, objective. Everybody likes to fight around. Actually, last night, there was such a long fight over the objective that both teams burnt, spent all of their cooldowns, all their ultimates, and continued to fight and fought long enough that the ultimates came back online and they used them a second time and still continued to fight. That fight never stopped. It was absolutely insane. I highly go recommend watching at least that fight from the VOD. It was insane. But Johanna going to get banned out here with the Tychus from Council of Mages. So getting rid of a lot of uh, shred coming from the tank. Very good uh, single target burst damage coming out of the Tychus. And can provide a lot of AoE utility. Also has the drill for the uh, zoning potential. But Orphea going to get bound out by Council War. A lot of champions still available. We've got Vala. We've got Nuzebo. We've got Dahaka. we got Brightwing. There's so many good champions still available to be picked up here. But it's going to be the Stukov picked up by D1 above all. Going to go 
with the support pick. And like I said, supports are usually heavily emphasized on Towers of Doom. Stukov having that AoE silence going to be deadly to deal with in these tight quarters. But Brightwing and Leoric immediately locked in by Musia, Musio and Waffle. Leoric typically does fairly well in the double soaking pressure. Can get from top to mid really quickly. Can soak it up and clear it out pretty fast, especially once he hits level 4. He will be able to clear out those waves no problem at all. So can do the double soaking with the best of them, but also has the sustainability if they're looking for a team fight. Diablo and Greymane picked up by Ender and Ultimate Hook over here. A lot of single target bursts coming out. I mean, this is a this is a knock them up, blow them up kind of composition here. Diablo wants to hit people in the wall. Stukov wants to throw down that silence pool. Greymane wants to jump all in on that target, try to burst it down. They're going to need to pair it with more burst damage if that's the kind of comp they're going to go with. So looking for like a Jaina, a Lee Ming, something mage heavy that can provide a lot of burst onto this Diablo target. And they're going to need the opposing team to get some squishies in there. So champions that don't have a lot of high mobility. Meanwhile, if you're counting on mages, now you're all about the mobility. You want champions that can spread out, champions that play away from the wall, that aren't afraid to take that step forward. So we're looking at champions like Cassia, looking at champions like Raynor, who are okay and comfortable sitting a little bit away from the walls, not necessarily scared about the Diablo. And you also want to make sure Brightwing is on top of it with the cleanse. ETC going to get banned out by Council of War. Council Mage is banning out Sonya. So getting rid of one of the double soakers, uh, you know, Zul is still available, can put the Orc behind a little bit. With the double soaking pressure, Zul is one of those champions who just excels all excels at the double soaking. Sorry, I just saw the Miss Windup Bird saying, "Wait, Lucio is filling in for Council of Mages." Shoot, what a healer he is! Hey, I, I just read him as I call him. I did recognize that was. I was like, I don't believe I call out that name very often when it's uh, Council of Mages there. But uh, also coming in to root for the waffle. Gotta love it, Blaze. And Falstad, Blaze picked up by Father of Three. We saw him playing pretty mean. Blaze, ETC, what else? And Johanna, last last time I casted them. Now pulling out the Blaze again. And Falstad picked up by Betnun. Getting some global pressure. There's the Lee Ming we talked about. Has the burst mage damage on top of this Diablo stun. And Dahaka going to be the one to double soak against the Leoric. Dahaka, Dahaka actually has the rotation advantage with the ability to teleport. So as long as he can pull Leoric up into the top lane and get him there, he can quickly burrow down to the bot lane and create a very fast 5v4 with that global pressure. And now we're waiting for this flex pickup by Council of Mages. Is it going to be a mage or is it going to be a second auto attack? And it's going to be Kale Toss picked up by Diesel. A lot of AoE damage coming out of that Kale Toss. And the engage from the Blaze is going to be a scary thing to deal with. They definitely can throw down the Entomb uh, Pyro, or not Pyro, Phoenix combo. Falsehead has the Gust to keep him in there if need be. They are going to, you know, it's not the strongest burst in the Entomb, but it's enough sustained damage that they'll be able to pull it off. Once the 10s come online, they should be able to get at least one or two kills with the Entomb play, depending on how many they catch in it. Meanwhile, on the side of Council of War... They've got the I want to kill this one target, knock him to a wall, and blow him up comp to a T. I mean, the only way this could be a little bit scarier is if you had Varian instead of Diablo, because Varian doesn't need to go all the way to a wall to lock him down. But this is the classic, I want this target dead, and I'm going to make sure they go down kind of composition here. Diablo does have the APOC at 10 that provides more team fight presence than a taunt Varian would. But Diablo, you know, it's really... Either one is going to do an excellent job as long as Diablo can hit him into walls. If Diablo doesn't hit him into the walls, it's going to be a little harder to lock the target down. You know, they don't have a lot of follow-ups locked down. Potential Stukov has the silence to keep him from jumping away. If he gets the root at 13, then they'll have a lockdown. But as long as Diablo can hit him to the wall, there's no reason that any target, except for maybe Blaze, should not go down. They will immediately die to this line them up and rack, knock them down kind of composition coming out of Council of War. Meanwhile, game one underway. Let's get these two teams introduced on the blue side. We have Council of War. We have Night Knight on the Lee Ming. CW Ender on the Diablo. D1 above all on that Stukov. Ultimate Hook sitting on the Grey Main and up in the top lane. We got Urz. Oh my gosh, he's moving so I can't read the name. Urz. The battle begins in 10 seconds. I don't know. Urz. On to Haka, Zosia. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm sorry. I'm going to work on that one. Three, Meanwhile, two, on the red side, we got one. Council of Mages. We got Waffle well, on the Leoric. Diesel well, on the Kale Toss. Father of Three on the Blaze. Musio on the Brightwing. And Betnun on the Falstad. 
much easier on that one. And Falstad going for that Q build, going to try and stack up these hammers. Going to be able to put down a lot of burst damage into that Entomb target. Going to help with the Kael'thas blowing those targets up. Meanwhile, the most enjoyable thing out of this, Kael'thas going Convection at level 1. Going to try and get the stacks up. Look for that magical number 20. Let's see if he can get it. I haven't seen a Convection Kale Toss in a half a minute, but Waffle took a quite a bit of damage in that fight. Dehaka is here, has the tongue available. Waffle did land the drain. Dehaka gets underneath. This is kind of a fun little skirmish up here. Dehaka losing so far, has to get himself back. Pulls the tongue. Will he get him in tower range? Oh, the tower looked like it was lining up to fight, but wasn't able to pull it. So neither one going to go down. And to the bot lane we go. Dehaka going to get the heal, going to be able to go to the mid lane, and we'll start the double soak game. So. That lane is pretty much going to be a little bit of a snooze fest. But bot lane, going to all be about that action. Boss Blaze trying to get the Jepper Pulse and does not hit. But Hail Toss getting knocked into the wall by Diablo. And look at the damage coming out. Li Ming able to get that First Blood, reset those Convection stacks. And First Blood going over to Council of War, getting the experience and going to go pick up their own camp here on the Pumpkins. And that is what we were talking about. If Diablo, Diablo. Diablo is able to knock him into a wall and get that stun. The blow-up potential is there from this Greyman and Li Ming. But Father 3 going to catch the Diablo out. The camp invade is here. Diablo going way deep here. Gets polymorphed. Has to get himself back. But Dehaka is here as well. It's the 5-on-3 we were talking about. The camp is successfully stolen. Falstad continuing to try to get those stacks up to 12 so far. Blaze not done. Wants to get the re-engage on the Diablo. And the Convection stacks up to four so far. But a lot of aggression coming out of Council of War so far. Not shying away from this early, early aggression. Gets three of the pumpkins to go in there. One, two, three all go in as well. And Blaze getting flipped, knocked back. Greymane there for the burst, leaving missed the orbs. Father of three will go down. The reset is enough. Li Ming gets all those skills back and the siege is on. Already getting a large chunk of this wall down and Li Ming can be that pesky pesky mage that could just continue to siege your fort down. Going with the Calamity build. So getting that extra damage with the teleports onto the Qs. And this entire wall is down. First objective is online. Bottom is where we're going to see the fight. Dehaka does not have the burrow to get in but it's going to be that gentleman's agreement looking like in the top lane, and the fight will be in this bot lane. Channel's going off here. A little bit of skirmishing. People throwing around orbs and hammers and all sorts of other objects at each other so far. But Leoric already able to get the channel off. The Hawk hasn't even started, so Leoric could potentially go interrupt, but on his way down, wants to give the 5v4 to his team. Look for a fight down this bot lane. Blaze gets the jet propulsion onto Lee Main. Kael'thas doesn't land the convection, I don't believe. It was close. But Greymane... Getting knocked up by the gravity laps. Dehaka has burrowed himself in. It is the 5v5 over the objective. Dehaka and Blaze both jumping into each other's backline, but the Polymorph perfectly timed almost gets Dehaka before he's able to burrow under. Ender in the backline finds Waffle, flips Waffle. Waffle is going to go down. Blaze jumping in and the return kill onto Stukov. It's one for one so far, but Father 3 getting fairly low. Brightwing teleporting in on the fall stat, so that will be a return kill. Li Ming getting these resets. Diablo gets the stun, gets the flip. Another reset for Li Ming. And that is three kills to one in favor of Council of War sitting at a 5-1 kill advantage so far. Coming out with some pretty aggressive plays here in the early game and being rewarded for them. Using this blow em up comp. And here you go. Falstad doesn't have the mana to jump away. Has to wait for the mana to get back up. Will he get it in time? Greymane is here. Doesn't have the leap. Father 3 is available. So is Keltos. Diablo goes in. Gets the flip. Gets the kill. And that is another kill going over for Council of War. And how about that? The auto attack was all Greymane needed. And now the camp is available and they're looking for a second camp steal. Kael'thas currently sitting at eight stacks of Convection. This wind up bird. They just need to burst down the Diablo. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's it. That's all you got to do. Find a way to kill this Diablo. Wait for him to jump in. Polymorph him. Blow him up. Going to be able to do that, especially once Falstad gets these stacks. Falstad and Kael'thas will have the burst damage to take down Diablo later in the game. Not so much yet, since they both are going for ramp up talents here at level 1. But later in the game, definitely will be able to take the Lord of Terror down. Although he is sitting on that juicy 100 stacks right now. 
So he is going to be rather difficult to chunk through. Meanwhile, this is the fourth camp pickup by the side of Council of War. Getting it successfully. Betnun getting a little bit of a poke, trying to get those stacks back up. Usually the number I'm looking at for Falstad to really get going here is about 60. 60 is the number where that Q starts to turn into something really deadly. Especially when paired with the boomerang. So about halfway there coming in for the Falstad. Blaze only on four stacks so far for the Pyromania. Needs a couple more globes. But everybody kind of skirmishing over Diesel and Night Knight both channeling. We did get the silence pool onto the Leoric. Waffle having to back himself off and back into these teams. Just doing a little bit of poking and skirmishing. Overall, both teams comfortable waiting for their tens. Right around the corner for Council of War, actually just coming online. Diablo wants to fight too, finds the false that gets the flip. Betnun has to get himself out. Massive shove coming out from the Stukov into the wall. That is the ultimate that Stukov went with. Meanwhile, wave of force picked up by the Leeming, Apoc by the Diablo, isolation by the Dahaka. Diablo going in, doesn't pull the Apoc, didn't have his damage there with him, so didn't want to waste the Apoc quite yet. Was just trying to get some more poke damage down. And it is going to be the throat rip by the Grey Mane. And this is where I love to see Council War continue their aggressive playstyle. Look for a pick, find a pick. Kaltos might be your target. Get that APOC combo down and use your burst damage to really... There's a massive shove. That's a pretty big shove onto Blaze. They have the 10 advantage, but only for a second longer. But Ender just holding on for a second. 10's now online. Coming in for Council of Mages here. It is the Pyroblast by the Kaltos. Emerald Wind by the Brightwing. Combustion by the Blaze. It is the Entomb by the Leoric and Falstead. Probably going to be the Mighty Gust, but, you know, with the Entomb, it could be the Hinterling Blast as well. Could go for the even the more damage in that Entomb. So we'll wait and see. He's kind of holding on to it. And it is going to be the Blast. So going for the extra damage into the Entomb, but Kael'thas check the bush. Does not have Convection Stacks. Diablo doesn't pull the trigger. Combustion going down. Catching on to two. Look at the damage coming out there. And two quick kills, and that is huge for Council of Mages there. Able to get the return fire onto Council of Ward. Apoc going down. Kael'thas is caught in the middle. Can Greymate jump in? He does. Gets the throat rip. Kael'thas loses the Convection Stacks, but at what cost? Daka trying to get away. Puts out the Isolation onto Blaze, but that's not going to be enough. Does go down. It's a three for one flip. Diablo getting stunned out here. Polymorph beautifully timed. And that will be a fourth kill. Council of Mages going blow for blow here. Did he just say some convection? Spicy. Absolutely, I said convection. Kaltos going for the convection. Kind of spicy to see here. Ming is so far ahead of her tank, and they never punish it. This is true. Hard target to lock down. Blaze can do it, but as long as Li Ming is on top of her game, here's the channel from the Blaze. They'll wind up and could just blink herself out. So we'll kind of keep an eye on that. Maybe Blaze will be able to catch out Night Night here and make Li Ming go Night Night. But that fight really evened up this game. One fight turns it back around. Seven to five in kills, 28 shots apiece on the objective. Castle War still doing their best. To get the aggressive camp invades, I believe they leave the camps. Actually, they're setting up with a cheeky play. Making them think that they're going for the objective, but not going for it. Blaze checks it out. The massive shove coming out. So they know they're not doing it. If Diablo catches the Kael'thas, throws him into the wall. Brightwing already teleporting herself in, but Leoric is here. The Entomb goes down. Ultimate hook gets the jump out. Betting on very low. Kael'thas still in a rough spot, and Diablo able to pin him down in the corner. And Diablo's got another victim in the wall. And Greymane able to escape. Leoric trying to get himself away. Gets the channel off, but is not going to be able to get the sustain. Father 3, Li Ming gets the reset. Uses the wave of force. And that is three kills to none in favor of Council of War. Going to continue to get this pumpkins. And should be able to pick up this bottom fort. Li Ming just going to poke it down for now. Diablo trying to clear the minions. It's like, hey guys, can somebody just knock a couple of these minions down? I don't necessarily do a lot to them. That is the ultimate prize on Towers of Doom, getting that bottom fort. That's going to be now five shots going in favor of Council of War. Massive shove did miss on the Leoric. The Kael'thas throwing out the gravity laps. Doesn't get the interrupt size. Ten shots in favor of Council of War. And they are looking very strong here in this mid game. A little bit of a hiccup in that one fight. Outside of that, been looking fairly good so far.
Continuing, they find the Keltos again. The ping was going down onto Falstad, but Keltos was a focus, had almost no health, but Li Ming not able to finish off the kill and a return fire coming in from the side of Council of Mages. It's a big pickup onto the Li Ming. Seemed the focus coming out of Council of War was just a little bit split. The Keltos was low, but the pings were onto Falstad. So the damage got split just enough that Falstad was able, or Li Ming, excuse me, Keltos, I'm throwing names around left and right. Keltos was able to survive. And that is a huge, huge gravity lapse, making sure. I don't know how Falstad did go down there. And now Keltos getting pulled to tower range. That's another pickup by Council of War. Must have been the burst damage. I mean, Greymane with Throat Rip does a shocking amount of burst damage. You have to really play around it. It's not picked a lot. Oftentimes we see the Cursed Bullet being the favorite choice. So a lot of people don't get to practice a ton against the Throat Rip. And if a Greymane lands this whole combo, he can 100 to zero any squishy backliner with the Throat Rip very, very quickly. So you have to be a little bit patient against this Throat Rip Greymane, who is doing quite a bit of damage here. 25k, but it is all sticking. Three objectives coming up here. It looks like a gentleman's agreement again, but Lee Main gonna go pick up this one pretty much uncontested, so it's gonna be another 10 shots. The engage is on, Diablo is the focus, Ender taking quite a bit of damage. Falstead gets the hit to the best. Gra Blast, gravity lapse, I tried to combine all these words together. Does land, and so that will be Diablo going down. He is gonna get back to the Soul Stone. So ultimately, it's gonna be the tower return. Eight to 25 is the core shots. The Council of War, they got on the 16 talent tiers, and now they need to find a fight with this baby Diablo. They have the Entomb up, they can use it, but Leoric is gonna be caught, thrown into a wall and absolutely shredded, and that is the burst damage coming out. Like we said, anybody but Blaze is susceptible to this damage, and Blaze even might be a little bit worse for the wares if he is on the receiving end of that combo. But Falstad up to 73 stacks, so these Qs, when he lands them, are gonna start hurting. Keltos still only on two stacks of Convection. Doesn't have the 20 stacks that he's looking for quite yet. Blaze landing the stun onto the Stukov, but here comes a Tahaka getting the flank in. Oh my gosh, Keltos who's got deleted. The burst damage is real coming out of this composition. Blaze gets a beautiful three-man jet propulsion there. Falstead trying to get the damage down, but we got a stun going onto Leoric. The combustion gets damaged, but not enough. And Father 3 having to get out. Stukov is picked up by Falstead in the back line. So, so far, it is that one-for-one -one trade. Leoric does get traded away. Li Ming gets the resets and is able to secure two more kills for her team. 16 to eight in kills. And this is gonna be four tower shots, and this could be very disastrous. They pick up these four, they go boss, that's eight. That's the number they need. Don't need anything else. Council of Mages have to get ready for a boss defense here because once this objective is picked up, the boss is gonna be the call. Night Knight getting the channel off here in the bot lane. Four shots going over, and the team not quite making a beeline like I thought they would, heading up for the boss. Maybe gonna elect not to go for the boss play quite yet. They still had 10 seconds on the Falstead and Leoric, but both have the ability to get to the boss pretty quickly. So maybe they were looking at those death timers and going, hmm, you know, we could do the boss, but we have a 25 to four lead. Maybe we just siege up this bot lane and play for this next double objective where they have to defend both of them. Also have their 20s, they were on an even talent tier, so there was a slight risk to the boss play, going for the safer play for sure. The higher percentage play. Diablo not fully stacked up yet at 78 stacks. False that's sitting at the 79. And really, if you're Council of Mages, what you want right now is this rotation down by Leoric before the 20s, get a very good Entomb and use your false that Not necessarily the target they want, Diablo can just jump himself out. But the burst damage going down, here comes the Pyroblast, they get the Diablo, that is one kill, and Diablo does not have the souls, so that is the start. Night Knight getting low, D1 above all, also low, Falstad jumping forward, gets another kill, so two kills going over for Council of Mages, and this is what you wanted to see. Finding the fight before 20s come online, those are two 50 second death timers, that does secure both these objectives, and they can steal the boss here. 
So this could be a 12-core shot play coming in for Council Majors. They don't really have to worry about the steal. It's Ahaka, Stukov, two of the less worrisome champions for a steal potential coming out of Council of War since uh, Stukov only went for Massive Shove and not the Flailing Swipes. Plus you have the Brightwing. So I'd love to see this boss pick up. Deny it from Council of War. But Council of War, meanwhile, they're going to go get these pumpkins in the bot lane. And there, the boss call is started. Brightwing, got to be a little careful. Greyman is there. Has the polymorph ability, so Greyman jumped in, could just polymorph him. Falstead going to go try and defend this bot lane. Doc is here. Falstead immediately jumping away, but has no further ability. Brightwing coming in. The throat rip was used. Greyman taking some tower shots here, rolls himself away. And this bot tower going to go over, or to keep now, excuse me, going to go over to the side of Council of War. But here comes the blaze. Diablo gets the flip. Dahaka taking quite a bit of damage, is able to get himself away. Has no further availability. Can Father 3 land this jet propulsion? Dahaka, oh, that wins before us. May have cut Dahaka off, but Blaze gets it on the back line. That's a three man hit trailing blast. That means it's going to come back up again very quickly there. Gets one. Gets the Q damage, and this Falstad's starting to pop off here. Keltos going to get traded away so far. It is a two-for-one pickup for Council of Mages here. Council of Mages down but not out. Throwing blows back and forth here, trying to get themselves back into this game. Doing a good job at it so far. Only a single objective. And this is, again, another favorable objective for Council of Mages. They want these fights over these single targets. Dahaka's going to be able to teleport himself in, but Stukov's still down. Won't be alive until for six seconds after this objective spawns. Unfortunate that miss there. That's a big cooldown for Falstad now. 120 seconds since it did miss on all targets. That Blaze re-engaging on Ender, and they catch Diablo out. He does have the souls. He will come back. But he does get reset on those souls, so he's going to be a very squishy Diablo. Council of Mages gonna claim another objective here. Li Ming's gotta be careful. Dahaka's here. Actually, they get off of it, so they do get the interrupt. Kael'thas coming back. They're looking to fight here. Falstad is the one that is in isolation. Greyman gets the kill onto Blaze at Council of War. They're ready to turn this around. Gets the kill onto Leoric. That's two kills. Brightwing gets the Emerald Wind off. Kael'thas is trying to get any damage you can, but there is no frontline anymore, and that means they can just zone off all of these squishy targets. The Apple gonna get the kill, and Council of War are able to find a way to get this fight and win game number one. And just when I thought Council of Majors was starting to come back into it, Council of War comes back with a play of their own and take game number one away. And just like that we are at a 1-0 series big point pickup coming in for council of the war here looking to get some of those sweet points and move themselves up in the standing and i mean they executed their composition fairly well they had a game plan the game plan was evident from the beginning and they just continually pushed themselves to be aggressive they wanted to get camp invades they wanted to find those quick rotations on the map in order to get those picks in that bottom mid rotation. Diablo was doing a fairly good job at making sure when he hit a target, it hit a wall and that allowed Li Ming an easy opportunity to line up those orbs to get those kills and just set Grey Mane up for more success. So, you know, it was the damage coming out of Council War, you know, 50k from Li Ming, 52k from Grey Mane, not as high as you typically expect, but all of that damage was sticking for the most part. There wasn't this long, prolonged throwing out of orbs. Every orb had a mission, and it was to get that kill, and Greyman was on the other end of that to finish it off. Or, you know, Li Ming got nine kills of her own, so maybe Li Ming was just popping them all off, getting some sweet, sweet uh, toe shooters in there. But yeah, you, you gotta love when a team comes out, they have an execution, they have a plan, and they execute that plan from the get-go, and it was well done. I mean, Council of Mages, they were definitely battling back in that late game. You saw the combination when they got it. Falstad, Leoric, it was popping off. Falstad was able to get some huge hinterling blasts in the late game. Getting a couple of three-man hinterling blasts. Diving aggressively to finish off some kills. And it, it, it turned into just this massive, massive 
you know, play coming out of the side of Council of Mages, but ultimately Council of War found that one fight. They got themselves ahead enough early in the game that they were able to sneak it in there and get that last objective fight and ultimately win the game. Looking at some of these sounds, I mean, the, the question for me is always going to be this convection. Like I said, it was a spicy pickup. It definitely is the damage, but against a Diablo, you got to be a little worried about that engage potential. Diablo sees this, and he's like, oh, baby. Kael'thas has no shields available and a Brightwing as his healer. I am going to dive, 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 and try and get that kill. And Diablo went full on for this auto attack build, which is actually interesting to me. Does well into the Blaze and Leoric, but Falstad and Kael'thas can stay at a distance, so he's got to get a flip and start attacking this Blaze to get the 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 reduction, the cooldown reduction he's trying to get out of that level 7 talent with the increased auto attack speed at 13. Um, so you could, you could definitely see, you know, he's trying to get all of these, you know, auto attacks so he can continually slam as many people into walls as he can kind of deal, trying to get those cooldowns up and running as fast as he can. Got to have a lot of melee on the other team. Leoric and Blaze definitely provide that melee, but Falstead and Kael'thas a little more difficult to land that into. Pretty standard stuff coming out of Blaze. Brightwing taking the critical miss at level 7. Leoric pretty standard. Dehaka pretty standard. Yeah, pretty standard everywhere else. We did get the root from Stukov. That was the big question if we were going to get the root. But fun game number 1. And I see double out of the corner of my eye. I see that redemption. Take a drink, man. So, going to get that redeemed real quick. Cheers to you, double. My tank cohort. Always love it when other tank players are coming out. Drinking some Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Kind of interesting. Very refreshing, for sure. Kind of on a nice... Summer day. We're sitting in 100 degree weather in LA right now, so it's a little warm. Refreshing beer goes down pretty well. But I just got the invite to map number two to see where we're going. We are going to Volskaya Foundry for map number two. And it is going to be Council of Mages that pick it up. So they got the choice between map pick and first hero pick, and they elected to go with map pick yet again. So we are going to go to Volskaya. Oh, never mind. Sorry. They they pulled a, a switcheroo on me. It was Council of War that picked the map. They switched to his first pick. So Council of War is the one that did pick the map. I mean, Council of Mages wanted first hero pick. So changing it up a little bit. And Volsky Foundry, another map that typically goes pretty late in the game. I mean, that game on Towers of Doom went all the way to level 20s. Volskaya, I, I cannot remember the last time I saw a Volskaya game end before level 20. I don't... It's, it's years. Years since I've seen a Volskaya game end before level 20. Yikes. Hot AF. Absolutely. Sweat down your back, kind of hot. Not fun. Not fun. But, Banstar, Knock Council Mage is getting rid of the Diablo. Don't want to see the Lord of Terror again. Pretty good pick up there. By Ender, played it very well. Got a lot of slams into walls. A little harder to play on a map like Full Sky, but still works out fairly well. First band coming in from Council War. Going to go with the same strategy. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We had a good showing game number one. We want to see if we can do it again in game number two. So they're going to ban out the Lucio. Not allow. I believe it was a Musio. Played in game. The healer in game number one. Tychus banned out. So instead of the Johanna Tychus. It's the Diablo Tychus here coming out from Council of Mages. Leaving the Johanna open. Maybe Father of Three looking to get that as a first pick since they do have first pick priority. And Kel'Thuzad. Big switch coming in from Council of War. Gonna ban out the Skeletal Mage himself. So still a lot of good champions. Again, Nazebo and Vala were both available and neither picked up last game. 
right wing available and Johanna available, which I know Father 3 likes Johanna, does very well on it. They banned it in game number one, available here in game number two. And just like that. It's like I watch these teams play all the time. It's ridiculous. I was going to say, after seasons of casting NGS, I, I, I'm pretty sure I've got some of these players figured out, the ones who continually come back. And so Father 3 going to lock in that Johanna. Ultimate Hooks taking the Anduin away, getting rid of that Light Bomb Falling Sword combo, and Gazlo picked up by the one above all. Nice little combo coming out here. Gazlo can group everybody together. Typically when you see the Light Bomb and the Grab Bomb in the same composition, you want the Grab Bomb to be the one to start the stun chain for the Anduin. You need something else to lock down for the Grab Bomb, so we're going to look to see what that other lockdown is going to be. But typically you want the Grab Bomb to go first to bring them all together so the Light Bomb can be timed perfectly to get that follow-up second stun. Whereas if you do Light Bomb first, you typically get less targets. You know, it, it, it may you may get shoved back, you may get crowd control, so it may not land. This way it ensures that the Light Bomb will land. Stukov and Zuljan picked up by the side of Council of Mages here. So we're going to take the Stukov away. I'm going to go for the stacking Zul'jin, which if it goes to level 20, Zul'jin will get the stack. So Zul'jin will be very scary to deal with. We need some hard crowd control with the Anduin and to help the Gazelle and Light Bomb. So we're going to need some hard crowd control coming out. Maybe a Varian. Maybe uh, we don't have the Diablo. ETC could be an absolute possibility. Not going to go Mosh, though, because of the Johan and Stukov. So maybe ETC is off the table. Um... I mean, Uther, if they practice double support, you could absolutely run the Uther here for the hard CC. But we'll see what they elect to go with. Here we go again. It's going to be the Chromie and the Grey Mane. So here goes the burst again. again. They cut a lot of it. That single target burst. Don't have the lockdown, but they have the slowing field for the Gazla if they need it. Raka coming in. Hi, all. Hi, Raka. How you doing today? Hope you're enjoying this. Division D West matchup. You missed a great game one, but I have a feeling this thing's going the distance here. I always like it when it goes to best of three. So Alarak picked up by Diesel and Rexar picked up by Waffle. This is a very comfortable Council of Mages draft here. They like all of these picks. They got some draft, some picks that they can really utilize. I'm still looking for this hard CC here. We got to get some big lockdown coming in from Council of War. It's got to come out of the front line. Not Don't have the Diablo anymore. All right, Anubrak. That's fine. Not the easiest to land, skill shot dependent, but it's got the lockdown that you need if you land it. So if you get that Impaling Barb, you can definitely follow it up with the Burrow. That target is locked down. Chromie and Gray Man are going to jump right on it. Also have the Cocoon available for the potential. It's going to be interesting. There's a lot of targets that you could potentially Cocoon. You could either try and Cocoon the Johanna and push past. You can Cocoon the Stukov to prevent the burst healing. You could Cocoon the Zul'jin and try and burn down the Alarak quickly. It's all going to be super crazy on how they decide to approach this. But that's why we play the game. Let's get to it. Game number two underway. Gonna get you over to the draft screen. I'll see you all on the other side. Or out of the draft screen, into the loading screen, excuse me. And we'll see if Council of Mages can turn this thing around and start their mission for a reverse sweep. Or if Council of War can come in here as the number seven seed and upset this number two seed, get the 2-0 domination, and get themselves three points to put themselves in that pack of very close contention for playoff seeding in the final weeks of this season 12. Let's get these teams introduced. On the blue side, we have Council of War. We got Night Knight on the Anduin, CW Ender on the Anubarak, Ultimate Hook on the Gray Main again, Urz on the Chromie, and the one above all on the Gazla. So we got a little bit of a roll swap going here from the side of Council of War. Meanwhile, on the red side, we've got Council of Mages, Waffle on the Rexar, Father 3 on the Johanna, Musio on the Stukov, Betnun on the Zul'jin, and Diesel on that Alarak. Chromie going to go for that W build. Use the Dragon's Breath to really put down some pain. Get that cooldown reduction once she gets that 20 stacks. And 
really on Council of War, they've got to be very, very careful. They don't have the best front line to deal with an Alarak. And Nubarak has a hard time dealing with Alarak. That's exactly what they got to watch out for. Alarak's going to try and position himself to pull the back line and get that burst out. So they got to be very, very, very patient and keep an eye on where Alarak is at all time. Because Diesel got a lot of experience on Alarak. Going to look to get some of those plays and get some of those picks. Meanwhile, Father 3 going at it with Gazzle up in the top lane. Interesting that Greymane is in the bot lane here instead of the Gazlo. Nubrak gets the crowd control onto the Stukov. The stun goes down from the Gazlo. But Greymane wanting to match up against Misha Bear. Chromie trying to get the stacks in the mid lane. Doesn't have any stacks so far on the W. Sorry, I was scrimming. Tell them to wait for me. I tried. I really tried. I tried to delay this as long as I could, but these teams are just itching to fight. In the bot lane, Greymane and Rex are going to go at it here. Adrak gets that pull onto the Nubarak. Chromie still sitting on zero stacks, needing to get them up. Meanwhile, Zul'jin onto Ender getting fairly low, has to burrow himself away. Anduin getting low as well, but the time stop, believe, saved his life. Meanwhile, Gazlo pushing in the top lane. So the side of Council of War is just heavily committing to this, like, three, you know, one, one, three kind of composition where they're just wanting to push all three lanes as fast as they can. And they just respond to wherever the, the big stack from Council of Mages is going. Greymane. And doing get a pick up their camp. No camp pick up so far from Council of Mages here. So Council of War getting the early objective again. Maybe we'll see if they elect to go for the aggressive invade again. We do see Stukov and Rexar committing to the camp pickup. Now Stukov gonna walk himself away. Zuljan cutting himself down to half health to get that increased attack speed. But Gazel is just again pushing up this top lane. Getting some of that soak. And then just backing himself off. No need to push forward. He's got the spidey senses tingling. And that allows the rest of his team just to start painting this map blue. Drawing all the attention up to himself. Rexar was able to get that. Can't pick up. So one turret apiece for both teams. But the siege camp has been picked up by Council of War. Council of Mages haven't picked up theirs. Looking to start off this objective. And all of these time stops available. Chromie can really pick whichever one she wants to activate. We do see Council of War rotating down into this objective. Johanna getting the Condemn, not finding anyone for the rest of the team to pull the trigger on Zul'jin, meanwhile, trying to clear out these minions in the top lane. So that means Council of War will be able to get this and start the siege here. Chromie getting a couple of stacks of W there. Pink's going down onto a Nubrak. I don't know. That, is that their own team picking them? I have no idea. Rexar. Look like he may want to try to play a flank. They see the Misha Bear. Time stop thrown down onto the Alarak. Nice impaling barbs to knock up three members. Gazel gets stunned out by Misha, but Diesel gets takes a big brunt to that Chromie burst. Has to back himself off, and Waffle's sitting fairly low as well, but Father 3 wanting to go back in. A time stop does save the Nubrak just temporarily. The turrets are down so far, and Misha going to be the first one to fall. Chromie walking forward here, and that is going to be Zul'jin. He's getting a lot of attacks in the back, gets the kill there. The overtime has begun, but Chromie going to go down second. Will Gazla be the third one to fall? Alarak gets the pull, and that is three kills going over for Council of Mages. Zul'jin up to 11 stacks so far. Alarak, 113 stacks of sadism. And both of these champions, the more kills they get, the longer these fights go. Diesel and Zul'jin are going to continue to stack up here and start putting out a lot of damage. Forty percent so far. Council of Mages ping in this camp. Anduin does have it scouted out. And Nubrak not in position to contest it yet, but on his way to actually he backed. So this will be a free camp pickup coming in from Council of Mages. Get the aggressive camp invaded. Now they're the ones dictating the pace of the game. 65% so far on the objective. Chromie does have the sands this time, so that is going to provide a lot of peel potential. 
Gonna have to reposition it from there. So gonna have to pick it up here in a second. But leaving it down, Rex are going in. They're actually engaging into the sand so far. Alarak is right in the middle, gets a two-man pull onto Anduin and Chromie. The overtime has started. Anubrak getting fairly low, pops the beetle. And Anduin trying to get out root, does catch it onto the Zul'jin, but Chromie not able to fall, but huge damage coming in from the Gazlo Chromie onto that Rexar, and Rexar the first to fall. Nobody's standing on it, so the overtime channel, and now Greymane gets on. Father 3 getting fairly low. Greymane trying to get in there, but not able to get the kill. Everybody so low on both sides. It really comes down to who gets that beautiful skill shot here. Gazlo trying to hold the point while the rest of the team taps. Alrak recognizes it, gets the pull, and that's Gazlo going down. Chromie trying to put the pain with these Ws down, but isn't able to find it. The overtime is going to finish Protector going in favor of Council of War, and Zul'jin leveled up to 10 and threw that guillotine right into Chromie's face. Another kill going over for Council of Mages here. 6-1 to one in kills so far, and in control of this first Protector. Rest of the 10s coming online for the side of Council of Mages. It's the pack mentality coming out from the Rexar. The guillotine, as noted from the Zul'jin, the flailing swipes from the Stukov, the counter-strike from the Alarak, and it is going to be the Blessed Shield coming out of the Johanna. Meanwhile, so far, Chromie, the cheater, getting the talents early, has the sands. But everybody else having to wait another half level before their heroic talents come online. So far, the Protector getting that top elf fountain. Trying to see if they can get the mid one as well. Not going to be able to get it here, but Johanna pulling forward. Alarak gets the pullback. Look at the damage. The guillotine... Hey, that was with a guillotine miss, and the damage is just getting insane for the side of Council of Mages. Alarak is putting out so much damage. Get the spray to boot, too. Look at this thing. Oh, I missed it. But Alarak, something that's going to be really tough to deal with as those Sadism stacks continue to grow. Got to get the kill onto him to get those resets. And I like we said, that was the damage coming out with the guillotine missing. If that guillotine had landed, oh my goodness. That, that is a very scary thought to think about. But Council of Mages shaking off the rust from game number one. Light Bomb going down the end to an Alarak goes under there looking for the Zul'jin. He does not have Taz Dingo. The Guillotine goes down as well, throwing it onto the Anubarak, but they aren't able to get the kill. Ender running himself away, and they get the kill. And actually, Johanna finishes off the punish quest there, too. Gets the four-man punish. That's a huge pickup for Johanna. She's feeling really bad. Father 3 is feeling really good about himself right now. It's like, yeah, that's right. I finished off that punish. Getting four members with a punish is really tough to do. So being able to get that off. You know, most people just pick up that talent just if they're like, hey, if I get two, that's another 50% slow. Now, it's an 80% slow. And all you have to do is hit one target. You don't even have to hit two. So Johanna going to be able to put down a lot of crowd control all of a sudden. Which is huge for Council of Mages. Looking strong here in game number two. Council of War. They're still continuing to do a good job picking up their camps. Got invaded a couple times while the numbers were down. Really what they're looking for to get back in this fight is find those 13s. Fight over this next objective if they want to. Maybe you can pick up a, a nice rotation here. They got Rexar. There's no way Rexar gets away from this, right? The new Rex gets the burrow. The crowd control goes down, and that is Rexar falling. Nice rotation. Good start. Gets a little bit of experience. See if they can actually get a punish here. With Even though they're down talents here, they got numbers, and they're looking for it. Alarak is the target they want. If they can get him here, the cocoon goes down, so a little bit of anti-synergy going on, but Chromie is able to get that. They're getting the burrow in, so they're wasting all the crowd control. Counter-Strike thrown out, so Alarak gonna go acceptable and walk himself away so not able just a little bit of anti-synergy coming out there seemed like everybody was throwing out their skills they weren't able to really chain them as well as they wanted to Swago coming in council mages game three win this wind up bird waffle is a great rexar he is a good rexar it is definitely We've been able to see a few Waffle Rexar games in the past. We'll see if Council of War, they got to wait for the grab bomb to come back up in the cocoon. They got plenty of time for that. 
The Health Fountain looks like it's getting pinged out. Rexar is not here. They see that Rexar is not here, so they're looking to engage, but look at the damage Diesel was able to put down on Ender. And the Blessed Shield, Anduin sitting fairly low, is in his own... Oh no, Zul'jin is able to get that kill with the Twin Cleave, continuing to follow it up. Grab Bomb goes down, catches three targets, but nobody able to follow it up since everybody's so low. Alarak going to chase this Grey Man around, continue to put down the damage. Really, it's just going to be one pull, doesn't land the Q because of the leap away. That's still two kills to zero. 12 to two in kills so far. The health camp going to go over to Council Mages. 16 to 13 so far. And they are cruising here in game number two. Much better rotations. Council Mages got a lot more comfort picks here in game number two. And coming back showing why they are the number two seed. Nurak looking for this fight. The Counter-Strike goes down. They do catch the Alarak here. If they can burst them down, that is going to be a big pickup. Gazel is getting the flank. They get Diesel, so that is a Sadism reset. It's one for one so far. That is a win in and of itself right there. If they can get away without losing too much more. Grab Bomb going down. Catches on to three members. So Dewan still getting a lot of value out of these Grab Bombs. The rest of the team just, again, not able to follow up. Chromie getting slowed by the Punish. And that is the devastation of this Punish quest being completed. Jonna can walk up and just hit Punish on Chromie, and Chromie is immediately dropped to 20% movement speed. Gonna walk real slow when you can only go at 20% of what you want to do. But Camp Steel successful coming in for Council of Mages. Second Punisher. Protector being picked up here. Rexar on the point by himself. The rest of the team just trying to siege it up. And they engage onto Zul'jin. The light bomb, Anubrak walked himself away so they didn't get the lockdown onto Zul'jin, but the guillotine not thrown exactly where Betnan wanted it. Was anticipating a further engage. Instead, everybody kind of ran away from him. We'll just call it both teams psyching out the other team a little bit there. But the Protector is here, and the Siege is going to be committed to the top lane. Maybe Council of Mages heard my... Uh, I can't remember the last time this game ended before level 20, so they're going to try and prove me wrong here. See if they can push this top lane. But Alarak in the back lane. Counter-Strike thrown down, is able to get himself away. The Rue goes down onto Anduin. They're chasing the Zul'jin, not able to find it. The Flailing Swipes come out, and Ender going to have to walk himself away. The Protector continuing to put the Siege on, down to about half health so far. Alarak gets the pull onto Greymane. The silence is there. He's so low, but he will survive. Two members in this protector. Oh, I thought that was Greymane was skirting with fire there for a second. But Johanna goes in, looking to find the Chromie, gets a time stop, but that actually takes the tower aggro off of her. And the keep falls. Nubrak not ready to give up this fight quite yet. The rest of the team not in hot pursuit. So Council of Mages is going to walk themselves away and try as they might to end this game before 20. Just wasn't in the cards. But Gazlo actually getting picked off here. The guillotine does land, and that is a big amount of damage going down. Ender getting fairly low. Light Bomb goes down, but doesn't get channeled all the way. And that is two kills picked up. Father 3 taking a little bit of damage on the Johanna. A couple of four shots here but ultimately everybody else just able to take it out Misha gonna finish tanking this one out actually may go down here does but Waffle is able to finish off the fort so trading Misha bear for the fort the council of mages got their foot on the gas looking to just continue to press Alarak trying to get those sadism smacks back up to 121 counter-strike being thrown out and then canceled So now 20s around the corner for Council of Mages. And I mean, Council of War, they got to just find a pick. It's it's going to be real tough coming down level 20s. They're not going to be able to get their 20s before this next protector phase. And this win condition is available in the top lane. So they got to find a fight before. Uh, it's got to be a, a good fight, too. It's got to be one that they can get the pick. But watch out, Castle dismounted. Alarak is on the hunt. Zul'jin gets quite a bit of damage down, but isn't able to finish off the Gazlo. 
And we'll see if Council of War can find that pick. Get the Nubrak, get a Cocoon. Maybe the Zul'jin right here, he's available. But not able to find it. Everybody just sitting back, wanting to farm up. Diesel gets the pull onto Gazelle, but takes quite a bit of damage. He's sitting fairly low. Nubrak not wanting to pull the trigger. Pack mentality thrown out. Rexar was anticipating an engage due to the low health bars. And now the siege is on over this mid keep. Misha actually going down. Johanna going in. Pops the iron skin. Doesn't have any further iron skin, but the curse bullet does miss. A new gets the two man knockup. The light bomb goes down. This time it lands onto the Stukov. The grab bomb goes down. Stukov is in a massive crowd control chain, continuing to be CC'd. Eventually does fall, so that is a big pickup there. But Alrak gets the return kill onto the Gazlo. One for one so far. Diesel getting fairly low. It's a two for two trade. And this is actually big for Council of War. It's getting them the experience. Greymane trying to get this kill onto Zul'jin. If he can get this, it's another big pickup. Gets the Q. Oh, but Zul'jin able to finish it off. It is a five for a two. And this is going to be potentially the game ending. They have the Siege of Minions available in the top lane. Going to go up. Rexar is here with Johanna and Zul'jin alive. Has the damage. The core is going to fall. G GG's going to come out. Game two going to go over to Council of Mages. But... They were level 21, so again, no game ends before the level 20s are online. Still, well played by Council Mages here in game number two to send us all the way to game number three. Let me get that updated for you all. Throw it over to the stat screen as we have, whoop, oh, whoopsies. This caster's messing up left and right, y'all. It is one apiece. It is not a 2-0 victory. Council of Mages definitely came back swinging. 23-5 in kills. Suljin not dying without the Tazdingo, too. So that's pretty impressive right there. Bet none. Having a pretty impressive showing. Able to play the Zul'jin safe and efficiently without dying. Not having the Tazdingo. But Father of Three, I mean, look at this. A 617 and zero stat line out of Johanna. You could see Father of Three on his comfortable Johanna, able to just execute it so cleanly, get a lot of those engages, get the four-man punish. I mean, it was great. Alarak doing work. Diesel able to put that show on. Gets a lot of those picks. Got up to, like I think it was like 150 stacks in Sadism. Eventually did get reset, but still put down quite a beating there. Meanwhile, it seemed like Council of War, for how well they were, like, you know, lining up crowd control in game number one, getting the aggressive, they started off the game that way, but then it kind of just started to fizzle apart a little bit. They weren't able to get the, the combination down. There were several times and went through Light Bomb and Anubarak, and Anubarak kind of went in and then backed up, so they, the Light Bomb didn't get any of the, uh, the combos. I mean, Gazlo hit probably... Four or five three-man grab bombs. So Gazla was doing his darndest to make sure that the team was set up for success. But that was what we were talking about. The combination had to be get the hard lockdown, get the light bomb or the 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 uh, grab bomb, and then set the light bomb on top of it, kind of deal to really allow Chromie and Greymane to get as much damage onto these targets as they wanted. weren't able to land that combination as cleanly as they wanted, and ultimately. They were just under so much pressure once Zul'jin and Gazlo, or Zul'jin and Alarak got started getting ramped up into that late game. Throw it over to the talent screen for a second for you all so you can see what's going on in those talents. Interesting build. I have to look at this one closer coming out. I don't know healer builds. I just know this. I haven't seen this, this healer build in a while coming out from Anduin. The Desperation Prayer. See that every so often. Moral Compass. Okay. It's going for a little bit more damage, it looks like. On some of these. Greymane going for the similar build. Actually looks like the, almost the identical build, except switch Curse Bullet for uh, Throat Rip in game number one. Actually, no, the 16 Talent's different. He went for Executioner in this game as well. Nubrak going for kind of a hybrid build, taking the first two armors and then going for the uh, 
the burrow build, which I like. But yeah, pretty fun stuff. Game three. I just got the lobby invite. So we'll get you guys in here in a second. It's going to... Oh, yes. They know me so well. It's going to be Battlefield of Eternity. I love them. This is this is fantastic stuff. It's going to be Council of Mages that are sending us to Battlefield of Eternity here. And this is by far my favorite map. So I am I am super stoked to be going to Battlefield of Eternity for the final map of this series. The council battles have been interesting. Absolutely. Battle of the councils. We'll see, you know, looking at this pattern developing, the team that picks the map ended up losing the map in the first two games. We'll see if Council of Mages can break that curse here in game number three, or if Council of War says, you know what? That looks like a pretty good pattern. We want to keep that one. Getting the readies coming out from one side. Waiting for the other side to give the ready. And here we go. Whoops, sorry about that. Battlefield of Eternity, game numero three. You could hear it, but you couldn't see it. I'm still getting used to this new setup I got here. Three monitors is a little too much. I might go back to two monitors kind of deal. Got this tiny little monitor for game for like just setting up I was I was pretty much gonna just devote this third monitor to OBS. Um but it has a little bit of issues since it's such a small monitor. Meanwhile, band starting off here, Council of War saying we're not changing anything out of the playbook so far. Lucio's still getting banned and Council of Major says okay we'll keep the same strategy. Diablo getting banned from us as well. So same bands as game number two. Will they keep it going, or will we see the Alarak? Nope, we see the Zul'jin instead, so it is going to be the Zul'jin ban. Now, Alarak doesn't do as well on Battlefield of Eternity. Still a heavy team fight map, but he doesn't have the burn. He has very, very slow burn. So you have to have somebody with a high, high burn to synergize with the Alarak if you pick him on Battlefield of Eternity. Vala actually getting banned. So that's the first time we see the Vala ban. A little bit of race nod, but the gray main still available. Gonna take the Stukov. So Stukov been first picked by both teams, I believe. Back and forth. Yeah. I think the Stukov has been the hot commodity of this series so far. D1 above all, gonna take the Stukov. But the gray main gonna be stolen by Betnun. Father of three gets his Johanna again. Going to run it back, and Johanna does very well on this map. Able to basically blind the opposing team's race from a very safe distance. While the rest of your team burns. And they have the gray main for the burn. So this is a very good start of a draft coming out for Council of Mages. Li Ming and Sonya picked up by Council of War. Li Ming, probably the best racing mage available. And Sonya... It's just going to be an absolute bear to deal with in that top lane. Has a little bit of race herself. Not as much as Artanis. Somebody can run those numbers if they want to call out my BS there, but we had a, a fun discussion when I was solo st streaming some Storm League the other night. Me and Maestro about who has better immortal burn, Tychus or Artanis. And it was actually a lot closer than you think. Maestro ran the numbers. Artanis does win, but it's not as much as you would think. Meanwhile, Anduin being banned out here, and that leaves Rexar for Waffle yet again, and Diesel taking Orphea here. So not going to go for the Alarak. Going to take the Orphea and leave the healer for last pick. Looking for the tank and the auto attack. The assassin damage. Murden's going to be that front line. It's going to be the Hanzo. Not having a lot of race, but does have a lot of team fight presence. Can do a lot with the engage as well. Getting that dragon strike. They don't really have a good comp set up for dragon arrow unless they go leap Sonya. But they have a great berserker Sonya comp. 
and will be able to really do smack other team, you know, smack around in these team fights. But Decker pick up by Musio. Going to be able to crowd control like crazy the old man can, telling his interesting tales of old. And there you have it. Both compositions online for these two teams. Game number three underway. Gotta love it when the series goes all the way. Let's get the shout outs going. Who are you supporting for game number three? Let's hear it in chat. I'm going to switch this over. Get in the loading screen. And we will get game number three. You know what? I have the time. I'm going to give you guys a minute. I'm going to give you guys one minute. Council of War or Council of Mages? You get one minute real quick. Start betting your sweet, sweet points. If you have them, you only get one minute. Who's going to win game number three for a chance to earn some rewards? Let's get these teams introduced. On the blue side, we have Council of War. We have CW Ender on the Murden. D1 above all on the Stukov. Night Night. On the Murd, or yeah, on the, sorry, Li Ming. The battle begins Ultimate hook on the Hanzo. And we got Urz on the Sonya. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the right side, we got Council of Mages. We got Musio on the Decker Kane. Bet none on the Grey Main. Father 3 on the Johanna. Diesel on that Orphea. And in the top lane, we got Waffle sitting there on the Rexar. Into the bot lane, we go. Everything's coming out for these two teams here. Murda jumping all the way in, wanting to get the early, early damage down. Went for the increased range. Oh no, went for the dwarf block, excuse me. Got some COM cheers coming in from Joker. The sun's going down Orphea. Putting down some pain with those jaws. But Ender wanting to return the fight onto the Greyman gets the stun, but nobody there to follow up. Everybody backed themselves off. So these two teams, they're not letting the nerves get to them. They are scrapping. Getting in each other's face, throwing fists around. Burden just jumping in yet again. Full health, catching the Greyman, and betting I'm going to go down. First blood going over to Council of War. Orphea trying to get in there, put some damage down onto the back line. Has to get herself away. Diesel going to go with that E talent on Orphea. So looking to get that three-man E to get that quest completed. Meanwhile, Hanzo going the simple geometry at level one. Trying to get to those 20 stacks to get that increased arrow count. Father 3 doesn't get on in time. So the camp goes over to Council of War. Sonya actually did rotate all the way down for this too. So Sonya's got to run herself back up to the top lane. So Council of War getting the slight experience lead so far to start off this game. Can't really fight right now. Li Ming on her way back. Bet none. Continue to put down the damage on the gray main. We are about 15 seconds away from this first Immortal. So both these teams heading over, or should start heading over to get their Bruiser Camp. Council of War have good timings, have had them all game, all series, really. Council of Mages on their way as well, set as, on their way as well. Setting the Grey Man and the Orphea. So both teams should pick this up. Relatively good timing. A little bit early here, but not too far out of the you know realm. Usually wanted to get it around the 15 second mark. Council of Mages is going to get a little bit better timing here. But Sonya, uncontested for this top camp. Rex are now looking like he's going to come up. See what he can find. We got teams coming up. Burden's here. Finds a stun on Waffle. Hanzo lands so many arrows there. Simple geometry indeed. And is able to get a second kill going over for Council of War. And this first Immortal is online. With Rexar being down, Council of War are able to start burning for this first half of the halftime show. Camp continuing to push in the bot lane. Top already cleared out by Council of War, so they are sitting very nicely for this objective. Get the halftime show, 
And it's going to set up, the first one always sets up on your side, so they're going to be able to set up and get the advantage here. They're going to start the burn again. Now, the first immortal, typically not the scariest immortal, can be burnt down. Council of Mages look like they're coming in. Johanna gets the blind, buys the team a little time. It might have been just enough. Sukov gets stunned by the immortal, but the damage going down on Diesel may have gotten in too deep. And the return guild coming in for Council of War. And they're on the hunt. They're not ready to stop. Trying to get Misha Bear here. The stun goes down. And Misha will go down as well. Another reset for Li Ming. And Council of War. Very strong start to their game number three. Father of Three pops the Iron Skin so he doesn't get knocked back by the Immortal there. This is a very healthy Immortal. The shield is pretty, pretty beefy when it comes out at full shield. Still, it's a, it's a weak Immortal, but it's going to at least break down this whole front line, if not more. Li Ming is an excellent person to throw down, and having Stukov as your backline just adds a ton of value with that silence. Murdit jumping in, finds Betnun. Gets the stun, taking a few tower shots, has to get himself out of tower range. The Immortal's starting to work on the fort. Down to about half health, the fort. Gonna get there by the end. And that is going to be all she No, Never mind, Ender jumping in for one last fight. But Father 3 is ready. Tower shots are going down. Grey jumping in, but he gets away. Li Ming actually jumping forward. Trying to get a little bit more damage. Dukov getting low, but the stun saving. Stukov's life here. Deckard doesn't get the root. And now Li Ming using the resets. Diesel's at 30 HP. You've got to be kidding me. Burden on the hunt. Trying to get this Deckard Kane. Hanzo throwing down that simple geometry. Not able to finish it. But they are rewarded with this camp in the bot lane. Very back and forth coming in for these two teams on that fight. But ultimately, Council of War coming away with the better of it. Having this fort down to almost no health, but Abusio a little overextended. Murdered can land the stun, but hits the minion instead. Stupid minion getting in the way. And Abusio just walks himself away. Throwing down a couple of potions for good measure. Back to the skirmish. About a half level lead so far for the side of Council of War. But Father 3 not ready to give this one up. Looking for the engage, they get the crowd control from the Decker Kane, but a big silence and stun going down onto the Greymane, and Greymane's gotta be very careful with the engages he chooses, due to the fact that if he jumps in too deep and Stukov is reading, it can put down the silence bull, and Greymane is in deep and cannot get out. So big patience coming out for Council of War, get another kill. Sonia trying to get this top lane under control at tens right around the corner for Council of War. Objective has started. Favorable positions for both sides here. Neither team have picked up their Bruiser camp, but Ten's just now coming online for the side of Council of War. Avatar picked up by the Murden. Massive shove by the Stukas. Leap by the Sonya. Wave of Force picked up by the Li Ming. We're waiting to see if the Hanzo goes that Dragon Strike to pair with the Leap, or if he goes the Dragon Arrow for the safer engage. It is going to be the Dragon Strike. So Hanzo going to try and get that Dragon Strike onto the Leap target. Everybody from Council of War going up to the top Immortal here. Council of Mages going to go to the bot lane. Try to clear out these minions. This Immortal is going to go to the top lane. It's going to be another fairly healthy Immortal. Ooh, big stun onto Waffle there. Li Ming comes in. Look at the damage coming out. Holy cow. Absolutely insane amount of damage. And the Li Ming popping off yet again here in game number three. It's a big pickup there because that means Sonya can push uncontested in the bot lane and get the soak. Meanwhile, the Immortal coming in with almost as much of a shield as it had with the first Immortal phase. And this tower slowly starting to fall. Deckard throwing the stay while listen out, catches three. So it's gonna get a little bit of a disengage. The Master Shove missing, the crushing jaws go down. It does catch the Stukov, so D1 above all. Getting a lot of damage, but Orphia gets caught out. Oh, she gets away. The leap gonna get in. Make sure she doesn't get fully away. Oh my God, you've got to be kidding me, Hanzo. I believe he was in single digits there. Somehow, Subway gets away. Betnun getting the stun, and Father Three gets shoved all the way back to safety. But that fort 
does fall. That's two forts picked up by Council of War. And they're not done. Looking for Father 3. Murden has a stun available. The dismount is there. Murden can... Oh, he misses the stun. So Father 3 putting on his dancing shoes. Tries to get away. But Li Ming going to secure that kill. Three kills to none so far in favor of Council of War. And the top siege continues here. Decker gets a three-man route. Orphea is available for the follow-up. They're trying to kill the Sonya here. Greymate jumping in. Now has to back himself out. So Council of War got their foot on the gas here in game number three. Bouncing back from that game two loss. And looking to close this series out. Meanwhile, Council of Mages, they definitely will scale pretty hard into the late game. Orphea will continue to grow very scary. Greymane, as long as the patience is there and getting the right targets, will be able to put out a lot of damage. Hanzo's still sitting on eight stacks of simple geometry. Waiting to get that quest finished. No bruiser pickup yet coming out from the side of Council of War. Maybe trying to hold it just for this next immortal phase. Missed it for the second immortal. Now trying to hold it for the third. But the story, I mean, look at the kills. Nine to zero for Council of War. And Council of Mages, they've been close on so many fights to getting a couple of these kills. I mean, Hanzo... I got to go watch the replay to see how much health Hanzo got away with. It it was single digits. I am almost certain of it. I don't know how low that number got, but it was so close. Third Immortal phase coming online. Sony heading down to go get this Bruiser camp. She wants to get this timing so that bot lane does push because right now... They're pretty much forcing Council of Mages to bring the full five man to these immortal fights. Meaning, if they can get this on a good timing, nobody's going to be in the bot lane to clear this out. That's a pretty decent timing. They have all these minions, so you're going to go make sure that those push. It's a favorable defensive position for both teams so far, but Council of War, they want to be the aggressors. They're going to go in, and they're just going to delay. They're going to poke with the Li Ming, poke with the Hanzo, sip themselves back, make sure they don't get stunned out by Misha Bear. And let these two lanes just kind of push. Greymane now heading down. Once they see the Greymane, they can be aggressive. And there they go. They see Greymane murdered instantly on the Immortal here. And the Immortal just getting shredded. Council of Mages using the halftime, first halftime show to clear out the waves. Now regrouping. Sonya looking like she wants to find a fight. Gets the leap onto the back line. The Dragon Strike not there quite yet. It's coming out now. It's getting thrown out. It's getting at least zoned everybody off. Rex are going to fall. So at least kept Sonya alive. Sonya going to spin herself away. And Father 3 getting very low. Greymane the next to fall. And that is three kills to none going in favor of Council of War. So although the Dragon Strike didn't kill the targets that they were looking for, it was a little delayed. What it did do was it parted the Red Sea and it made everybody on Council of Mages run backwards, which allowed Sonya to survive after the leap. That's a huge play because it allows Sonya to be here for the push. She can go into one lane. The others can go into with this immortal and they can keep this macro game alive. So well done by the side of Council of War playing a very, very clean game number three. Showing a little bit of razzle dazzle on top of it. They're committing all five members to this siege. This is a full shield, full health immortal. The third immortal is a little more difficult to take down. That was the Blessed Shield thrown out by Johanna. Trying to throw it out, it's fine to catch. Didn't find one. And now Murdered jumping into the back line. This has been the aggressive play style they've been throwing out, and they find the kill. This is the combo they wanted. Two kills, three kills. Oh no, it was Murdered. Sorry. Two kills going out, but one was Misha Bear, so it's kind of one and a half. Still, look at this immortal. Full. Health still sitting at about a fifth of his shield left. This is going to be some core damage. How much we are yet to see. The siege is on. Razzle Dazzle him coming in from D Nasty. Absolutely. Gotta love the Razzle Dazzle. The siege is continuing on the corner. The Immortal putting down quite a bit of damage. I believe this will get into at least the 60s. Maybe even to the 50s. One more hit. It is 57. So that's a 57% health core 
Council of War looking very strong here in game number three. By the way, thanks, D-Nassi, for the follow. Definitely appreciate it. Welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a fun time here. This is a fun, fun series going on in Division D Northeast today. These, these teams showing up, putting on quite the show here. Each team not backing down after a loss and coming back. And here's Sonya just aggressively leaping. Find the Deckard, and Deckard is no more. Orphea and Li Ming are having a mage battle. Li Ming getting the better end of that. And that is two kills immediately going over. And the core could be called here. All five members are here. Rex are going to be the next to fall. And here come Council of War. Pushing in the old Razzle Dazzle coming in from Harkins Giants Bane. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Council of War have made their core call. Greymane and Johanna trying to stop it. Can they delay? And this is going to be it. Game number three. Going back over to Council of War. And I don't know where I'm going here, but that is nowhere good. And Council of War going to come away with the 2-1 series win. And the upset. And showing it in very... A very strong showing here in game number three. My goodness, how about that show right there coming in from Council of War? And that was absolutely insane. Well played by both of these teams. I'm super excited. I love when these series go the entire way. I love, and, and the pattern did finish out the way that it had been showing. The team who picked the map ended up losing the map. The Council of War comes away with it. I'm going to message our captain, see if we can get an interview for that one. That was absolutely a ton of fun. I'm going to go kind of just chill and channel, see if I get anybody to come hang out with me. A moose, the moose. I love it. A moose, the moose coming in with a follow. Thank you so much. Welcome to the channel. Oh, here we go. We got ultimate hooks coming in. Hey, Ice. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Not too bad. I, I mean, congratulations on the 2-0 the or 2-1. Sorry, 2-1. Don't want to yep. go too crazy here. But 2-1 series win. How's the team feeling right now? Yeah, really good. Uh, we actually just lost um, a guy off our roster. He, like, quit on us mid-season. So we uh -oh. kind of, like, we pulled our uh, sub. Me and Arnie kind of were both subbing. We were, like, splitting healer time. Mm -hmm. um, so we, like, pooled our time together and figured out what days we could play as us five. And, um, yeah, we... Uh, we did it up. I mean, did it up indeed. Coming in, you know, number seven seed against the number two seed. You know, most people consider this a pretty big upset coming in here, which is huge for Council of War because that gets you guys a lot of points. It gets you guys up into that pack of, you know, the, the one through six seed. It's very close at points. And now it's going to be the one through seven seed as you guys just close that gap. So uh, how did you guys, you know, going against the number two seed, Council of Mages, you know, it's a battle of the councils. How did you guys prep for this series? Yeah, so uh, we did a little prep uh, before the series started. Um, you know, we have Arnie, uh, who's in chat here, and then our captain, uh, C.W. Ender. He, they do the research, so we, we kind of had the research. We had the maps they were good at, the heroes they were good at, um, and we knew what we didn't want to play against, and... Uh, we banned it out. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, pretty much sticking to your guys' guns there. Even with the loss, the Lucio just didn't want to deal with him at all yeah. for the most so, part. Yeah, last season I was on uh, C team. Um, and I know Amusio decently well because we played against him a lot. And I know his Lucio is insane. Mm -hmm. So that was an insta-lock ban every game. Yeah. So respect to you, Amusio, if you're watching. Respect. <laughs> Your Lucio's way too good to play against. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, when it comes down to it, it's like, hey, you know what? This guy plays a really mean whatever character. We just don't want to deal with that. So sometimes getting rid of that champion, putting him on something else, just gives your team a little bit of that one up. 
But yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, the stories of the series, you know, we'll go through each game, but each team that picked the map ended up losing the map, which is kind of funny when that happens, you know, when <laughs> oh, it works out funny. that way. Um, but going to game one, Towers of Doom, they send you guys there. How comfortable are you guys going to Towers of Doom? And how did you approach that draft phase coming into, you know, map number one? Yeah, so um, we like Towers of Doom. Uh, we think we're pretty good at it. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but we're kind of a team fighty style team. So we like maps where you have to team fight. Mm -hmm. um, and so we went with Comfort Heroes. Like I said, we lost a roster um, guy on the roster. So our drafts were kind of like, what heroes do we all play? Okay, uh, let's make a cop from those. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was our strategy pretty much. Yeah, and you could see like the development as the draft went on. You guys get this hyper aggressive, you know, we want to, you know, invade. We got the Diablo, we got the Grey Main, we got the Lee Ming. We want to go in and find a target and just kill that target. Like absolutely obliterate that target, make sure there's no remains left for anybody to find kind of deal. It yep. came out with the aggressive playstyle, which is kind of how you have to run that comp. So going for the camp invades, going for the early aggressive, uh, you know, plays around the objectives. Like the minute Diablo calls something out, everybody's on it. So seems like comms were going pretty well. That game was pretty much in the hands of Castle War from zero to sixteen, seventeen, and then all of a sudden things kind of started getting shaky in that late game. So kind of how did you guys work through that mid game shakeup and eventually come around and get the get the win there on that first game? Yeah, so uh, that was just kind of unfortunate situation. Um, we, I think it was like 19 to 8. We were like 19 and a half, and they were like 18. Mm -hmm. um, and me and the other DPS, uh, Night Night, were calling, don't fight. You know, we don't want to fight. Let's get 20s. Uh, just safe soak. And then um, CW, our tank, kind of got caught in that middle area mm -hmm. and didn't really get a choice. It was like... I have to fight or I'm going to die. Right. Uh, so we kind of got forced into a fight there. So, um, you know, good on Council of War for forcing that pre-20 fight and getting that catch-up XP. Uh, but after that happened, it was just kind of like, okay, guys, like the Diablo died. We lost souls. Let's just pull it back, get 20s, and, um, sure. and win from that advantage. We did notice, so I think it was shortly after both teams got 20. We got, like, uh, three kills, and we got the objective. Mm -hmm. And then, like, a minute and a half later, I was like, wait a second. Their core is at four. We could have just bossed and ended. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually going to be my next question, yeah. Because <laughs> I, was, I was curious if you guys, if it was just like a, we didn't recognize that the boss would have ended the game, or if it was like a... Oh, you know, the boss is available, but it could be maybe slightly a little bit of a throw. So we just want to play the 100% safe call, go for the 20s, and then just win it there. So I didn't know which way you guys were going with that. Yeah, it absolutely was uh, late recognition of okay. that win condition. Uh, our team clearly can't do simple math of 9 <laughs> minus 5. Um, I mean, when you're in the heat of it, it's hard sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And carry the, the thing... 2, you know, and yeah, yeah, some exactly. addition by subtraction. It's like, oh, yeah. shoot, I forgot what number we're at. Caster math. I know. When I'm a caster sitting back watching, I'm like, oh, the math is easy. Come on, guys. How are you missing this? And you guys are all just sitting there like with your, you know, pocket you know pocket calculators like wait a minute oh yeah we can go get the you know it's i completely yeah. understand definitely been there in before like that that is definitely one yeah. of those like oh shit we could have just ended the game whoops yeah absolutely and the, we noticed it with enough time um but night night again in her infinite wisdom um was like uh, like we can get there sure and start the boss but brightwing has emerald wind and i was like that is an excellent point we probably shouldn't do boss now. Yeah. Yeah. Once it gets too late, it's like, ooh, we don't want to do it 5v5. We were debating it maybe 5v3. 5v5, yeah. It, it could it could throw, you know, a map like Towers yeah. of Doom where late game team fights can really swing the map in the other team's yeah. favor. It's like, yeah, yeah, let's just let's just not do it. But So yeah, exactly. Once we got to that point, it was kind of like, okay, well, like we missed out on the boss. Let's just gather, you know, gather our thoughts. And we only it's only four to win, so we need one, we need one cap. Yep. So let's just like regroup, get the one cap, and call it GG. So. And eventually, that's how the story played out. Getting the win there in game number one. Go to game number two. Now you guys get to pick the map. You send us to Volsky Foundry, and for how dominant game one was for uh, you know Council of War, 
Council of Mages came out with this Rexar, Alarak, you name it, they picked it kind of composition and just came back with a vengeance here. What happened in that game number two? Yeah, so uh, again, respect over to um, Council of Mages. They were they were really good opponents. Like, we did not... You said that game one was a steamroll, but like that team was good. They were never out of it. Like they, oh, yeah. they took some late game team fights and they had us on the ropes even in game one. Uh, game two... During the draft, um, like I said, we had a we lost a guy on the roster, so we were kind of like trying to make these comps up on the fly, mm-hmm. and we kind of got beat by the buzzer a little bit because um, we kind of I don't know if you saw, but there was like a very late gray main pick, it was yep. like with one second left, um, and after we picked it, I was like, oh my god, guys, gray main gets absolutely bent over by this comp because they had like they had Cho to blind me, Alrak to pull me away from the team, right. Um, Rexar for an additional stun once I get pulled by the Joe. <laughs> so it was like, I mean, again, respect to them. They made my life an absolute nightmare. In that game. Yeah. They had the Stuke off as well. So once they get you all in there, they're like, haha, silence, you can't roll away, you know, kind of yeah. deal. Yeah, so it's just, exactly. it makes Gray Man's life, like you said, an absolute hell kind of deal. But Council of Majors definitely come out swinging, get that game to win, and then they get the map pick, and we go to Battlefield of Eternity. So. How'd you guys kind of just, you know, mentally reset, recollect, and get ready for this map number three and uh, go prepare for a matchup on Battlefield of Eternity? Yeah, uh, basically just like you said. Um, after we got out of game, we were kind of like, all right, guys, like, just shake that one off. We we got beat by the buzzer in that last one. Like, we got a, we got a pick that was super bad into their comp, and we forced, I don't know if you noticed, but Night Night actually healed that game. Mm-hmm. Um and that's not her comfortable role. She's our DPS, like, all season long. So we forced her onto a role that she wasn't necessarily comfortable on. Um, so we were kind of just like, let's forget that one. Move on to the next one. We love BOE because we do love BOE. Mm-hmm. Um, let's draft a comp that's good on BOE. And it's funny because before I went into the game, I was like, they're probably going to take Greymain from me. I was like, so wh- what else do we want? Um, sure. And we settled on the Hanzo, which ended up being a really good pick into them. Although I misclicked Dragon Strike. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I didn't know if that, that was a I don't know if that was a misclick or if that's just what you wanted because I, I saw the 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 potential for the Dragon Strike leap combo where you had the Stukov, so you could get them all. You know, if Sony could find the pick, Stukov could silence them, and you could get yeah. that Dragon Strike to go off, and it actually really yeah. helped actually, in one yeah, of those it fights. Did. It did. Yeah, I did. I was going to say we got it once. I think it was Rexar and one other person. And yeah, we just completely blew them up with it. So it ended up working out, but that was not our game plan going in. (laughs) So a little bit of deviation from the game plan, but ultimately able to get the combos down. And I mean, again, for how bad game two seemed to kind of fall apart, game three was like pedal to the metal all the way. You guys had a plan, executed it very well you know, kind of deal and end up coming in with, I believe the kills were like 15 to one or 16 to one. So very, yeah, very yep. disciplined, well executed playing the, you know, macro game and then using that macro game to get your immortals kind of deal. Uh, so, I mean, just major kudos from watching that. That was, that was an absolute gem of a game to watch on how to play battlefield of eternity uh, with, with, with the composition you guys picked up there. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's kudos to Erzy who's our, um, off lane slash DPS player. Urzi, um, okay. Now I know how to say it. <laughs> yeah, Ur- Urzioza is how you say it. Um, okay. Yeah. I- uh, but yeah, he he shot called that game for the most part, um, and he was making calls on like, come on guys, let's let's go grab bot camp. Now let's rotate top and kill. Um, a lot of times he was calling like, okay, you got the bot camp, that's pushing. Come top and let's catch this Rexar. And I think we got him. Uh, two two times on pretty much the the same thing where uh, that top camp and he went up to you know force yeah. Sonya off of it and then suddenly Sonya's whole team is there. And it's like uh oh now I'm not in a yeah. good spot you know kind of deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So getting great rotations, good communication. It looked very very clean in that game number three. So so major props there. So uh you know two questions I always ask as I wrap up these these interviews. The first one I gotta ask. For this marathon of a series, who do you think was the team MVP for this entire series? Dang, that is a tough question. Um, you know what? I'm going to give it to Night Night um, because 
not only did she pop off on Lee Ming game one um, and game two. I was going to say. She was, she was joking. Three. That she 2v. She, yeah, game three. Sorry. Um, she um, popped off on a 2v1 near the end and killed the gray main, which was absolutely insane. Uh, but not only that, but we forced her onto a healer role that she wasn't comfortable on. And she, like, she, you know, she did the best that she could. We ended up losing the game, but I definitely don't think it was Night Night's fault. So props to her for popping off game one and game three and, um, you know, taking the, the healing role when she needed to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love to give out, you know, the shout out to the team, to the teammate who's willing to make the little bit of a sacrifice and, uh, yeah, and exactly. ultimately pivot. Uh, last things last, before I let you go, I'm going to kind of open it up to you. Uh, any shout outs you like to give a lot of fans in chat, the floor is yours. Go right ahead. Nice. Yeah. Shout out to, uh, the team. Um, shout out to the, uh, team captain NT for, um, and slash CW Ender. He goes by both, um, for, you know, leading us and, uh, tanking, which is not always a fun job. You get yelled at a lot when you overextend. Uh, so props to him for, you know, sticking that role out. I know it can be a rough one at times, but we love him. Um, and uh, shout out to you for picking up this cast last minute, because that's super dope. Uh, and shout out to Council of Mages. Like, they they are a team, man. They they came to play. They were good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I just realized, I apologize, Arnie. I didn't even see you were in here. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm just going to open it up. Any comments you'd like to give on the series? I kept talking to Ultimate. And I was like, oh my goodness. All right. Well, uh, um, just so you know, I'm I'm the one that plays uh, the one above all. Okay. And yeah, no, I'll just say that, you know, again, kudos to the Council of Mages. Uh, we were all very hyped up for the match and as one of the guys who does the research i made sure to you know focus in on who and what uh comp that we want to be prepared for as well as expecting what kind of uh rotation as well as expectation of their damage output since i'm uh i'm one of the one of the two main healers ultimate hooks and i i make sure to you know keep in mind as to like what how much we can stay in and how much, you know, until we needed to say, Hey, let's, let's step out. Let's get out. We, uh, we need to get out of here. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, the researcher is probably one of the, the most important roles on the team. I don't do it for good reason because man, that's a stressful job, but absolutely critical in the team's development of a game plan, which as, as we talked about with ultimate definitely looked like you guys had a game plan coming to the series and executed it very, very well. Not much appreciated. And again, uh, playing against the Council of Mages, you know, they definitely um, put us at our at our A game. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, Arn D one uh, Ultimate, thank you guys both so much for the interview. Congratulations again on that on that two one victory. Uh, looking forward to seeing this, you know, potential rematch coming up in the uh, the playoffs once we get there in a few short weeks. But uh, for tonight, thank you both so much, and congratulations on the win. Yeah, Let's thank you. Guys. Thank you for casting. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Take care, guys. Take care. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was D1, which I apologize. I, w I didn't have Discord pulled up once I started the interview, so I didn't even see that they were there. But that was uh, D1, above all, uh, the healer extraordinaire coming out of Council War. And then that was Ultimate Hook, the gray main game one and two, and Hanzo in game three coming out, giving you your interview for your victors, Council of War. Uh, absolutely awesome series to be able to, to watch and see. Thank you all so much for coming in. You know, we got up quite a bit of people. I also got to give a shout out one last time to all the follows. So thank you so much for all the people coming in. Xeno, Dovetail, D-Nasty, Amusio the Moose, the real... The real Lizaria or Lizaria is so is those oh god they just told me how to say the name Erzosia I think I got that Erzosia Erzosia I don't know <laughs> I'm so sorry I I know I can say it like once I've told it and then I was told it and I'm like shoot I can't remember but thank you all so much for the follows definitely appreciate it if you enjoyed yourself had a fun time on this channel it's always an absolute blast being here I love casting all of these games. I love casting everybody 
you know, all the different levels of NGS. I'm even over on NGS main casting a lot of the uh, Storm Division channels. Haven't had a lot in these past couple of weeks, but got a lot coming up in the future. We're getting ready to get into those playoff situations where they will need more casting for those divisions. And we're wrapping up the season here. We're in week seven. I believe it's a nine week season. So we've only got two. No, it's a 10 week season. So we've got three weeks left in the rest of the season. I'm going to try and get in as much as I can. Usually can only get in one tonight. And usually I'm the late game caster. So I'm usually on around eight o'clock Pacific time, 11 o'clock Eastern time, trying to get those casts in. So, uh, thank you all again so much for coming out. Definitely appreciate all the support. Thank you for the subscriptions, the follows, the bits, all that fun stuff that came in over the past day and a half of casting that we've done so far. Plenty more coming up the rest of the week. But for tonight, that is it. I'm going to get you guys rated over to another channel. There's more HOTS action. We're just getting the night started. So I'll send you over there for a raid. Have a fantastic night, everybody. And I'll see you here next time. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Take care.